about five years ago, I caught wind that Sergey Brin was funding the construction of a secret airship right here at NASA Ames in Mountain View. I saw some pictures of this early airship, got kind of obsessed with it. Sergey didn't want to talk about his airship, but over the last couple years, I managed to ingratiate myself with the guy who's bringing Sergey Brin's airship to life. And today, I'm gonna to take you guys in to see this thing being made. I'm Alan Weston, and I'm the CEO of LTA, and I'm the first person to work on this project. We've got this beauty behind us. Give us, give us the basics. This is Pathfinder 1. This is 122 meters long, has about 28 tons of total lift. It's designed to cruise at maximum speed of 60 knots. It could probably go over 2,000 nautical miles in one leg. Our mission is to expand and complement existing humanitarian relief using lighter than air technology and at the same time reduce the carbon footprint of aviation. Rather amazingly, some of the first airships ever made lived right here in this hangar. Almost a hundred years ago, the Navy began building airships in Ohio so they could be flown to California. The Navy saw these craft as key to gathering intelligence and performing reconnaissance. It was the glory days of airships. You've shown me some of these slides just here in Silicon Valley. There were times when the sky was like filled with airships and, and then they were doing amazing things. I mean, there's one that was almost like an aircraft carrier. This was actually in 1932 and 33. There was a hook on the airship and biplanes were carried inside the airship okay. and they were refueled. Then of course, airships had some very bad PR and planes came along and people lost interest in these majestic beasts. Large airships disappeared in 1939. So like everything people might think of, those are all blimps. And the difference being a blimp just has no rigid structure. Right. This is a rigid airship with a skeleton, and so the skeleton defines the shape. And Al thinks he can bring these sexy, hard-bodied airships back, this time filled with nice, non-flammable helium. So you've got this wonderful history, and you're like making it all happen again. Right, right, yeah. back to the future. <laughs> Can we do the horn? Sure. <laughs> I don't think anyone, I've ever heard anyone use it before. <laughs> this is Carl Tosik. He's a mechanical engineer I've known for years who really gets around Silicon Valley. I asked him to give me the grand tour. It's a lot of scaffolding. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> At first glance, it appears almost nothing has changed in a hundred years. But really, this thing is a mix of the super old and the super new. So this is one of 12 of the electric motors that propel the ship. Okay. And it's, uh, you can see it's motors mounted on a pylon, which can rotate. So think of this airship as a giant quadcopter. All these are thrust vectored. They can be pointed in order to lift the ship straight up or move laterally. And then here, this outer material is, a, is kind of leveraged from racing sailboats. Okay. This is how it's laced on, and this is a, kind of an anachronism from the way airships were, were built 100 years ago. There's 40,000 of these 40, lacing tabs. 000. Each one is laced by hand. Jeez. The Pathfinder 1 skeleton is made of carbon fiber making it lighter and stronger than past airships. The ship will run on diesel to start, but LTA hopes to switch to either solar or some form of hydrogen power in the future. Overall, the airship will be much slower than a plane, but at least the passengers will feel virtuous about their carbon footprint. I've never been in a gondola. Designed to seat about 10 people, it's, it's used 
commercially for sightseeing by the Zeppelin company on their NT airships. And so if you're doing like a two, three day journey from London to New York, you just, you're hanging out in here. For in those. this space. Admittedly, for a futuristic airship, this is an underwhelming interior. But this ship is just an experimental vehicle, the first of its kind and not for the public. And the company has bigger things in mind than just leisurely sky cruises. I think you guys are most interested in, in kind of disaster scenarios. I mean, that's the heart of, of why you're making this thing. Right. When you arrive at a disaster site, you often show up and the place is wrecked. And so the port may or not be working. You then have to get your supplies to where the disaster is. And typically, you know, the roads are gone. Helicopters are really expensive to operate. They have limited range and limited capacity to lift things. So that's where an airship can also help. And it's the cargo, right? I mean, they, they can carry a significant amount of stuff. Right, we, we've studied airships that could carry up to 200 tons of cargo. Our approach is scalable to build larger airships that could carry even more. At the time of writing, Lighter Than Air is on the cusp of revealing this beauty to the world. But many potential kinks remain. The market for slow, weather-dependent airship travel may not be enormous, and the cargo applications Al favors are a bit further out. But if the sight of this white whale doesn't move you, frankly, I'm not sure why you're watching my show. Al promised my two kids one of the first first rides. It'll be a great ride. Yeah. Remember. <laughs> Your kids, though, flight test engineers. <laughs> Just keep them safe. <laughs> <laughs>